Hello everyone. Hoping that all of you are good and fine. So this is our uh, lecture number two, where we are going to discuss about uh, uh, the first unit of our subject, that is corporate accounting. So our first module is issue of shares and allotment of shares. So in our previous uh, class, uh, where we started our uh, discussion. Uh, taking the particular subject, Corporate Accounting. We learned about uh, the title, Corporate and Accounting. So what is this Corporate and what is this Accounting and why there is a need for uh, Accounting for Corporates or Companies. So altogether we concluded that whenever uh, uh, there are transactions which are measured in terms of money or money's worth, there is a need uh, of uh, accounting and we have to account for all those transactions because uh, we cannot think of uh, oral communication as we know accounting is the language of the business so common language we have to deal in the business but accounting is uh, somewhat the language of the business where you can uh, convince the users of accounting data <coughs> it may be the uh, internal users or it may be the external users. So finally we came to know there is a need uh, for accounting uh, for the companies, for the corporates. So in that company accounts or corporate accounts we have uh, many uh, contents. So let me start with the first module that is issue of shares and allotment of shares. So in this particular video we uh, discuss about uh, what is the concept of issue of shares and allotment of shares and uh, other concepts uh, that are connected to uh, this particular topic. So before we start the meaning of issue of shares and allotment of shares, let us ask ourselves few questions and we answer all those questions uh, one by one and uh, Finally, we can easily understand the concept of issue of shares and allotment of shares. So what are all those questions? So let us put ourselves up. I have taken uh, some four questions so that we can easily understand the concept. So number one, you are finding the common term here, shares, on both the sides, issue of shares, allotment of shares. So in both the cases, we have a common word, shares. So what is this share? So that is our first question. We answer for uh, this question, the meaning of share and what is the nature of this share. Similarly, second question we ask ourselves, who issue the shares? So when you are saying that uh, there is a share, concept called as share, who can issue the share? So what is the nature of that uh, share? So that also we discuss. Then <clears throat> if you are saying that one is issuing shares, to whom that is to be issued? So that is our third question. To whom shares are issued? Because when you say that we issue the shares, that should be other party who is ready to buy the shares. So to whom shares are issued? Lastly, we answer this question, how to account for it? Because we know the concept of accounting came into the picture because of the a money measurement concept. So whenever uh, transactions are taking place in the companies in terms of money or money's worth, so there we think of accounting for all those transactions and uh, we have a universally accepted rule uh, that is accounting cycle starting from business transaction to final accounts. So business transactions to journal, from journal to ledger, ledger to our uh, trial balance from trial balance to final balance. So this is what the practice what uh, we have been practicing uh, while uh, recording the transactions or while maintaining the books of accounts. So let me start with the first question what is the share? So before I tell the meaning of share let me introduce uh, some more uh, concepts or let me tell uh, some more concepts. Uh, for example in the first uh, video or first class, 
we discussed something about forms of business organization. So in business, we are finding uh, different forms of business organization. So what are all those forms of business organization? So number one, sole trading business. Number two, partnership business. Number three, joint stock company business. And we know the differences between uh, or differences among uh, these three concepts: sole trading business, partnership business, and joint stock company business. So sole trading business, it is a business carried by the particular individual. So any business is carried by one person that is called as sole trading business. So partnership business, two or more person. So if any business is carried by two or more person, we call it as partnership business. And in case of uh, company business, joint stock company business, I think uh, uh, members, there will be uh, maximum members uh, who are uh, thinking of uh, company business. So uh, comparatively, Sole trading business carried by one person, partnership business two or more person, and joint stock company business large number of members. So here, what I'm telling you is, whatever may be the forms of business, or irrespective of forms of business, we need money, we need finance. If you are thinking of starting sole trading business, if you are thinking of starting partnership business. If you are thinking of starting joint stock company business, initially or in the beginning, we need money. That is also called as finance. So in accounting, that is called as capital. So here, capital is the initial contribution made by proprietors to carry their business activities. So I repeat, capital is the initial contribution made by the proprietors proprietors in the sense the owners to carry their business activities so here we are dealing with the company business so again i repeat irrespective of types of business we need capital so if you are thinking of company business for example you take abc company limited so there is a company called as abc company limited so if uh, abc company limited wants to start its business it needs capital so what is the amount of capital to be contributed what is the minimum amount of capital to be contributed again in case of sole trading business comparatively i'm telling in case of sole trading business we do not have any particular act to take care of the sole trading business i hope you are getting there is no particular authority to take care of the sole trading business. In partnership business, we have the Act, Partnership Act of 1932. But one more thing in partnership business is there is no compulsion, there is no mandatory that the partnership firms uh, must be registered under the Companies Act of, sorry, under the Partnership Act of 1932. So it is not uh, compulsory, it is not mandatory. But when we come to this particular company business, try to remember, when we come to this company business, it is mandatory, it is compulsory that all the companies must register under the Companies Act of 2013. So earlier it was uh, Companies Act of 1956, now it is Companies Act of 2013. Uh, they made some changes uh, in the particular Act 1956. Now amended act that is companies act of 2013 so from this we can uh, justify we can conclude that for company business there is the authority there is the act so act means which gives the rules and regulations which uh, tells about all those companies uh, uh, activities to be conducted okay so mainly we deal with the uh, rules and regulations given by the particular act so as i told earlier in case of joint stock company business or company business uh, there is the act to take care of all the company activities so coming to the point our initial contribution we are thinking of company business and we need some initial contribution so that is called as capital uh, that is the accounting term capital so what is the capital required 
to start our company business. So this is fixed by the act or this is fixed by the authority. So we have the clear picture. Authority gives us clear picture. If you take in a broader sense, normally we classify company as a public company, private company. For public company, this is what the minimum capital requirement. And for private company, this is what the minimum capital requirement. For our information, we know that for private company, 1 lakh rupees, minimum capital requirement. For public companies, 5 lakh rupees. Who is fixing this 1 lakh rupees and 5 lakh rupees? That's what I said, companies act. We have the act. So act prescribes, act tells about, act gives all those rules and regulations. Now, as per the instructions, as per the rules and regulations given by the act, we are contributing our money that is called as capital initially. Okay, so whatever you are contributing initially to start your company business, which we call as minimum paid up capital, it is termed as authorized capital. Authorized capital. So I repeat, the minimum contribution we are contributing, which is called as capital, to start our company business and as per the act we have contributed our amount and it is termed as authorized capital okay so we are dealing with authorized capital now company as per the rules and regulations companies can divide this total capital total contributed capital into small units so here, total contributed capital can be divided into small unit that each unit is called as share. So the total capital of the company is divided into small unit, each unit is called as a share. Now, in other way, if we discuss the meaning of this share, share is the paper the unit of the shared capital with definite value i focus uh, on this particular meaning share is nothing but the unit of the shared capital or capital with definite value so why do we need this value for example uh, i continue with the same example abc company limited which has uh, invested 10 lakh rupees as its capital Okay, so that is their minimum paid up capital which we call as authorized capital. Now, as for the company sites uh, rules and regulations, so that can be divided into number of units and that can be issued. To whom that is to be issued, uh, that is our second question, there we discuss. Now, ABC Company Limited wants to raise this 10 lakh rupees capital because we know what is the role of capital? Uh, capital is uh, somewhat uh, initial contribution when we think of our uh, business activities, commencing our business activities, okay, regular activities, so that we can think of our uh, reaching our objectives, whether it is economic objectives or social objectives. So 10 lakh rupees, uh, it is the initial contribution by this ABC company limited and it wants to raise this capital. Company wants to raise this capital. So how to raise this capital? They can divide. They can divide this total capital of 10 lakh rupees into units. So how that is? So if you take, for example, they can divide it into 1 lakh shares of 1 lakh shares of rupees 10 inch. 1 lakh shares of rupees 10 years. So altogether we can raise 10 lakh rupees. Now what is the meaning of this 1 lakh shares? What is the meaning of this rupees 10? So that's what I come to the meaning of uh, share. Share is nothing but unit of the share capital. So what is the share capital? <coughs> 10 lakh rupees. Unit of the share capital. Share is the unit of the share capital. We have 1 lakh units. 1 lakh units 
that is nothing but shape of rupees 10 each. So what is our meaning? Shape is the unit of the shared capital with definite value. So how to get the value? We know price into quantity is equal to value. So what is the price here? 10 rupees. What is the quantity here? 1 lakh. So price into quantity 1 lakh into 10 rupees. So we get 10 lakh rupees. So that is nothing but the total shared capital of the company. So altogether we can conclude that our first question answer that is what is share? Share is nothing but the units of the share capital with definite value that is called as share. So here company is raising its capital which it has contributed to start its company business and it is raising this capital by issuing the shares. Okay, so whatever units are there of the total uh, capital, we call it as a share. Now, second question, when you are issuing shares, who can issue the shares? So, we have taken the example of ABC Company Limited. So, companies can issue the shares because it is prescribed by the uh, Companies Act or uh, Companies Act of 2013. So, companies can issue the shares. So, that is our second question answer. So, what is share and who issue the shares? Then question number third, to whom shares are issued? Normally we know, uh, if you take the corporate sectors, whenever companies are thinking of issuing the shares, uh, we or companies focus on the public. So, shares are issued to the public. Now again, uh, we find uh, one more question here. When companies are issuing shares to the public, what is the benefit to the company? At the same time, what is the benefit to the public? Okay, so when companies are issuing shares to the public, both are benefited. Both are benefited. So what is the benefit to the company? Company can raise its capital. Company can raise its capital. And we know the nature of the capital so that company can carry its business activities. Whether it is manufacturing company or service oriented companies, they can carry their business by raising the capital. So what is the benefit to the public? See, if you are issuing 1 lakh shares and if you are saying uh, to the public that we are issuing 1 lakh shares, we are not going to give you any benefit. Nobody is going to subscribe for your shares. Okay. On the other hand, if you say that we are issuing 1 lakh shares, in return we are giving you some benefits. In return, we are giving you some benefits. In that case, only public, they are going to subscribe for your shares. So, the public, those who are purchasing your shares, subscribing for your shares, return will be given by the company. That return is called as dividend. Okay. So, whatever shares they are purchasing, they are subscribing for, for that they will get the dividend. So, that's what benefit to the company as well as benefit to the public. So, that is our third question answer. To whom shares are issued? Company issues shares to the public. Okay. So, public, they get some return. They can earn some benefit. Company also earns benefit by raising the capital by issuing the shares. Then, how to account for it? So, again, I am repeating every time. Whenever we use uh, this uh, account, we know that we can account for only those transactions which are measured in terms of money. Now you may ask, sir, where we are finding this money measurement concept? That's what I said. 10 lakh rupees, our total capital. That we divided into number of units. 1 lakh shares of rupees 10 each. So 1 lakh shares of rupees 10 each. Units with a definite value, 10 rupees. That comes to our total capital, 10 lakh rupees. So 10 lakh rupees is nothing but the monetary value where we find money measurement concept and we know that whenever there are transactions which are measured in terms of money, that is to be accounted for. Okay. So all the four questions, hoping that uh, we understood all those four questions and uh, this concept of share who can issue this share, to whom these shares are issued and how to account for it. So how to account for it in detail we are going to discuss in this model uh, that is issue of shares and 
allotment of shares. Now, coming to this uh, heading, authorized capital. So, authorized capital, we understood that minimum paid up capital required by the companies to start its company business. Okay, so that the company is going to raise from the public by dividing that capital into number of units with definite value. So after authorized capital, of course, uh, all these are called as uh, divisions of share capital. Divisions of share capital. Okay. So what are the divisions? Divisions means a different uh, concepts. Because altogether we have contributed uh, 10 lakh rupees. Total 10 lakh rupees is nothing but our share capital. So we take uh, a different division of this total share capital of rupees 10 lakh. So in that we discuss authorized capital. I take it as number one. <coughs> so authorized capital, minimum paid up capital required by the companies to start its company activities. Then after authorized capital, Issued capital. So, what is this issued capital? The name only clarifies. Issued capital, issued to the public. So, 10 lakh rupees is our uh, total capital. Okay, so that we are thinking of uh, raising from the public. Total 10 lakh rupees we are dividing into units, that is 1 lakh shares of rupees 10 each, altogether 10 lakh rupees. Now, you can issue these shares to the public to raise the capital. So how to issue? Two choices are there. Two choices are there. Number one, you can think of issuing total 1 lakh shares to the public. Or you can think of issuing less than 1 lakh shares to the public. Maybe 90,000 or 50,000. So it is left to the company. So total 1 lakh shares you can issue to the company and thereby you can raise the total share capital of 10 lakh rupees. Or you just issue 50,000 shares of rupees 10 each, you can raise 5 lakh rupees as capital. So whatever number of shares you are issuing to the public and thereby you are raising the capital that is called as issued capital. Okay. So, number of shares issued to the public and it is uh, nothing but part of the authorized capital only because whatever further uh, processes you are going to do that should be from this authorized capital only. You cannot think of any other amount. Okay. So, issued capital, it is the part of the authorized capital where company is issuing shares to the public to raise the capital and that capital is nothing but issued capital okay then one more division we have number three subscribed capital subscribed capital so once you are issuing shares to the public for example we take the same example one lakh shares uh, uh, we have divided total capital of rupees 10 lakh into uh, number of units, 1 lakh units of uh, 10 units. Okay, so we take 1 lakh shares for all these uh, divisions. So, our authorized capital 10 lakh rupees, 1 lakh shares of rupees 10 units. Our issued capital, same number of shares we have issued, 1 lakh shares of rupees 10 units. Our issued capital also, capital is also 10 lakh rupees. Third comes, once you issue these shares to the public, for how many shares public are subscribing? That is important because blindly we cannot say that we are issuing 1 lakh shares and the public they subscribe all 1 lakh shares. I think this is a somewhat a thinking blindly. Okay, They may subscribe total 1 lakh shares or less than 1 lakh shares. Okay, They may subscribe total 1 lakh shares or less than 1 lakh shares but whatever subscription they are doing and thereby whatever capital you are raising that is called as subscribed capital 
okay number of shares subscribed by the public that is called as subscribed capital and uh, after uh, subscribed capital we find called up capital so we are issuing as a company we are issuing uh, 1 lakh shares to the public and they are subscribing for 1 lakh shares now it is the responsibility it is the duty of the company to collect the amount of the capital of those 1 lakh shares so we have to call for those 1 lakh shares because uh, they subscribed for 1 lakh shares so whatever you are collecting after subscription from them okay whatever amount we are raising collecting after subscription from them that is called as called a capital called a capital we are calling for our money we have issued 1 lakh shares to the public of rupees 10 lakh that is our uh, authorized capital or that is our uh, total capital 10 lakh rupees so we call for our amount we call for our money then lastly after called up capital we find paid up capital paid up capital paid up means we are calling for our money for 1 lakh shares of rupees 10 lakh after calling they pay our money okay so after their payment whatever amount we are collecting that is called as paid up capital so here these five are the division of uh, the total share capital of the company so what is the total share capital of the company according to this example abc company limited uh, we have uh, 10 lakh rupees share capital that we divided into 1 lakh shares of rupees 10 each so that's what the minimum paid up capital required uh, by the companies as per the companies act so which we call as uh, authorized capital and from that authorized capital only we can think of issuing shares to the public so that is called as issued capital and uh, after issuing uh, the shares to the public they subscribe for our shares that is called as subscribed capital subscribed capital it is the part of the issued capital okay then called up capital part of subscribed capital so once they subscribe for uh, our shares we call for our amount so that is called as uh, called up capital and uh, paid up capital also the part of called up capital so they pay the amount for example 1 lakh shares x purchase subscribed for 1 lakh shares we are calling we are asking x to pay the amount of 1 lakh shares which is called as uh, called up capital so once he pays that amount means that becomes paid up capital okay so each and every division is uh, connected and according to that companies they do their processes so this is how uh, we deal with the uh, shares of the company so here uh, first model itself is issue of shares and allotment of shares you may ask why this is the first model why can't we think of some other accounts as the first model so the reason for that is this is what the beginning process of the company where we find the concept of uh, uh, monetary values or uh, a money measurement concept and we know that whenever there is uh, a money measurement concept that is to be accounted for so this is for uh, this particular uh, lecture number 2 class so in our uh, next classes uh, again in detail we discuss about uh, how to account for issue of shares and allotment of shares and uh, as per the act as per the rules of the company uh, how all those uh, transactions uh, to be recorded in the journal of the company and how to prepare uh, the ledger accounts and finally how to prepare the balance sheet uh, but more than that we need to understand uh, the transactions incurred by the companies for different processes uh, one by one and uh, whenever we find uh, money there in the transaction uh, that is to be accounted for so with this i conclude uh, uh, today's uh, lecture so further uh, we will discuss in our uh, next classes thank you